In my previous video on Stealth Harness, I promised an update on durability of this thing. And after three years, I'm very happy to report that it stood up really well. Apart from obvious scratches, it's structurally intact. There's no stitching coming out. Super stoked with this. Apart from obviously the, uh, the spreader bar needing replacing, but that was done on the, on the recall warranty thing. This survived really, really, really well. And you have to take into account that I do kite, well, I used to kite about pretty much every single day when the wind was out. I was either on the water or in the water teaching or we were traveling with this thing. It was bashed around the airports. It was used as a kite carrier, um, thrown into cars. It was driven over once as well and it, it held up. So kudos Mystic, well done with this one. Right, but let's talk, let's talk about the new one. This guy came out last year and I wanted to do this video earlier, but um, I decided to relieve myself of three rotator cuffs in my left arm. So I had about seven, eight months of break from doing anything partially exciting. Um, so I'm back on the water now and I really wanted to have a few more goes before I form my own opinion on the new guy. And I think for most of you, you're wondering whether it's worth getting this one if you've got a stealth already. And I, I'm not 100% sold on that. And <laughs> I'm gonna give you a couple of reasons in a second. <laughs> and I appreciate that running a shop, I should probably be pushing this harder but I really don't want to sell you on something that you don't need. And also, if you've got a local Mystic dealer, even though I, I'll leave a link to us in the description if you like this video, feel free to purchase from us, there's a little discount code there as well. If you've got a local dealer, go to them, because without your local dealers, you won't be able to get replacement parts and you should be shopping local and supporting your local businesses. And the recall I just talked about, it's much easier if you can just walk into the shop and ask the guy to fix it for you or replace it for you. He's not going to be there if you keep shopping online and disregarding the fact that he's just next door. Even if it's a couple of quid more, you're supporting your local dude. So if you got a local shop, go to them, don't buy from us. Sorry, got sidetracked a little bit. With the new harness, there haven't been too many changes that are significant enough, in my opinion, to warrant an upgrade unless your harness is fairly worn out. One of the things worth mentioning is that they've made the valve bu back plate and those little winglets on the sides smaller than the previous one, it's a couple of centimeters. So it's significant enough when you put them side by side and when you try them side by side, you can feel a little bit of a difference. It's not that if you've used your one, your the old one before, and you jump into the new one, um, say a session later, it's not gonna be like Eureka moment going like, oh my God, this is so much better. Now, when you ride them side by side, and switch over mid-session, you're still not gonna go, this is so much better. You're gonna feel a difference, but I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna be significant enough for you to go like, you know what, I need a new harness. It's more of a, I want a new harness over I need a new harness, if that makes sense. That smaller footprint on both the winglets and the back plate translates directly into how well it locks in around your body. Now, the smaller back plate allows you for a little bit more freedom of movement. And if you're riding strapless, you know how hard it is sometimes in a hard shell to go to all side and fully extend if you don't have a sliding bar on, on the front. So having a slightly smaller back plate helps and it also means that this back plate sits a little bit lower. So you feel that the low distribution is better. I've always thought this is gonna be the other way around. So when they announced that this is actually getting smaller, I thought, shit, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more painful sessions. And to be fair, the support feels very similar to the previous one. I, even when I had them back to back, I couldn't really tell a difference. What I could tell a difference is how it wrapped around me. And now, if you're ripped, you might just leave a comment below because I don't have anyone who's ripped riding in my local spots to test that theory. But with normal body shape, um, it feels like it's just a little bit more locked in around you. Those smaller winglets mean that they, it sits better in between your ribs and your hips. So it just feels like it's not gonna twist as much, even though the previous one, the 2020, wasn't really giving you much movement, either side to side or up and down, wasn't really riding up, unless you wiped up really hard or you're riding massively overpowered, any harness will eventually creep up. But having said that, I had some massive wipeouts in both of them and I never ended up with neither of these around my tits. Editing Jake here, I just realized that I totally forgot to mention the uh, weight difference between these two. There isn't one. They're both about 1.7 kilos each with spreader bars on, so you're not saving anything by upgrading. I would have thought that because of the smaller backplate, the new one will be a little bit lighter, but 
it than if it would be it would be negligible if you put it on your back you wouldn't be able to feel the difference I probably should have taken the spread bars off but it's 6 a.m. and it's just not happening I got up for an early morning kite session it's I'm not a morning person that's not happening either uh, back to the vid in terms of the comfort, I stand by what I said in the previous video that again I'll link here because there's a lot of things that are still applicable to both of these harnesses. If you're riding in a wetsuit, it's absolutely fine. I, I mo I'm mostly in a 5 or 4 mil. I can't feel any discomfort and or differences between this one and Majestic, for example, that has a little bit more padding. But if you're riding in board shorts or just a rush vest, probably this might be this rubber might be a little bit annoying around your skin. I don't know, I don't have that problem in Scotland and to be fair, even if we're traveling, uh, we always wear wetsuits anyway. If you go to Cape Town, like being without a 5 mil in that water. There are also a couple of smaller differences like this locking thing here that, ugh, that keeps your extra straps inside. So you can just clip it in here. This is my non-working arm, so bear with me. There we go. All clipped in. It's not like it's a massive game changer because uh, with this dude, like you can still you can just do this, right? Just shove them in and uh, they, they never really come out. What I was kind of missing on the previous one was that leash attachment on the front. Like, I don't really use handle pass leashes unless I'm teaching. So someone can hold on to the back of the harness if I need to drag them back to the shore or if we're in Tarifa and you need to rescue people all the time. There's also a bit here for your knife, which I've lost today and I didn't really go back to my shop to pick up a new one but basically just clips in, probably I didn't clip my one in. It's just nice to have because again, in the previous one, we didn't not only didn't get a knife with the harness, but also there was no way to store it. You had to buy a separate pouch for it. So that kind of sucked. Um, and you should be wearing a knife with you. Like it's, you might have never been in a situation where you had to cut yourself out. I was, and it's not fun. So this is a really nice addition, but like everything nowadays, it's sold separately. It's just like freaking batteries to everything. It's just a bloody nightmare. In terms of the materials, I mean, they are a little bit softer everywhere, including your spreader bar. I can't really tell a difference whether it's actually better or worse. It feels just as comfy as the previous one. My only concern was when I've seen the new Stealth spreader bar that this is going to be too soft and it will result in the spreader bar tilting upwards when you ride in. It, it doesn't. It just sits where you leave it, which is pretty neat. Um, the locking mechanism is pretty much the same as, as previous one. It just gives you a little bit more satisfying click, which is, uh, I need to do this. You're kind of uh, more reassured that it is actually locked in. Other than that, it's the, pretty much the same stealth bar as you had. That little bar here that caused issues last time is a little bit more significant. And it feels just as robust as the replacement one that we've got sent after the first recall. So there's no much revolution happening here. One thing to mention is that if you haven't had a hard shell before from Mystic especially, it's worth again going to your local dealer and trying a few sizes on because you might be surprised what size you're actually in these. Now I mostly ride large harnesses in soft shells um, and a medium in stealth and a medium in actually the Iron Riot curve as well. The thing with hard shells is that you really need to tighten them up to the max and to do that, the harness can't be too big around your waist. And if you're in between the sizes on the size chart, um, go for a size smaller, ideally. We had a lot of harnesses we had to send back and forth between the clients because they bought a size too big and it was riding up or wasn't fitting very well. So if you can, go to your local dealer. If you can't, buy size down if you're in between the sizes. Don't go size down if you're in the middle of your large or a medium because that's going to be another disaster. So overall, this is a good upgrade. Um, it's not revolutionary in any way, but it's 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 decent enough for you to go like, you know what, actually, my one's getting a little bit worn out. It's time to move on to newer shape. Perfect. If, you're, if you bought your stealth in the recent, I don't know, season or so, and you haven't butchered it, you don't really need to jump on the new one unless you really dig the designs, which I, I, I really like the orange thing, it's just like, yeah, it looks super sweet and this this carbon wave, I'm a sucker for good carbon. So if you're in that kind of a mindset, you might just as well grab a new one. If you have any questions about this harness, drop them below. I will get back to you and I will do an update on this after a few years, I hope, um, how well it held up and hopefully it's just going to be as durable as its older brother. And yeah, 
happy shredding. <laughs>